clearly this government has something to hide. Why else would they be muzzling scientists? That's Thomas Duck with uh, Dalhousie University's Atmospheric Science, Sciences Department. Canada's Information Commissioner is investigating if there's a campaign inside the federal government to muzzle scientists like him. It was a complaint from the ethics advocacy group Democracy Watch and the Environmental Law Centre at the University of Victoria that sparked Suzanne Legault's investigation. The Information Watchdog is looking into seven federal departments and agencies. So, are the limits too strict? Is spin control suppressing science? Or are these reasonable controls to protect publicly funded and proprietary research? Joining me now in studio, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment, Michelle Rempel. Thanks for being here. Also in Vancouver, the NDP's science and technology critic, Kennedy Stewart. And in Toronto, Liberal environment critic, Kirsty Duncan. Thanks for joining me on Easter Monday. I appreciate your time today. Now, Ms. Rempel, I want to start with you. Your reaction to the Information Commissioner believing that there are grounds for an investigation here. Yeah, I think what she said was that it's within the scope of her investigative uh, portfolio. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm optimistic that uh, the results of her investigation will be what we've been saying all along as a government. First of all, that our scientists have access to media. I mean, I, as you mentioned, I'm with the environment portfolio, and I think the stat for, for that portfolio for media interviews alone is over a thousand in a year. Uh, you know, the second thing to note is that our scientists across government publish articles that we use as legislators to help inform policy decisions that are that contribute to the body of science internationally. But I think the concern was that they can't go out and speak publicly about those articles that they publish. That's the concern. So why do you think um, the commissioner agreed to this? Well, I think that the stat that I just mentioned to you proves otherwise. Our scientists do have access to media and you know what I was going to close with earlier is that it's not just science within government departments it's our science capacity across the country you know I was really glad to have the opportunity to come on this panel today because I spent the better part of my career working with academia prior to politics and I know firsthand that scientists across this country are world-class leading-edge um, academic researchers which make Canada proud so a lot of that comes from government funding that our government has stood up for in the last six years so I, I think that there's a lot of facts that show that our government scientists are having access to media that they are contributing to our policy dialogue in this country but I think it's also worth noting that when it comes to policy interpretation and it, when it comes to deciding what certain policies should be uh, you know, any legislative official, that is our role as well, including my colleagues that are here on this panel. There's a lot of stuff that happens in parliamentary debate. Let me bring in uh, then at this point, show you what Duff Conacher, he sits on Democracy Watch's board and what he said about the right for public to know this information. Take a listen. Mm -hmm. The public pays uh, government employees and politicians to create this information and the public has a full right to know all of the information and the Conservatives have been going in the illegal and undemocratic direction by restricting access. He's saying they're restricting access so does the public have a right to hear about the science they paid through for mm -hmm. through media reports? Well, I'll make two points. Mm -hmm. First of all, when you when you go to any government website, there are thousands of publications that the public can access that are produced by government researchers. But I think he also raises an interesting point that if you talk to any academic researcher across the country that are has work that's funded through public sector funding, like so for example our tri council, is that um, the public's uh, property? We have an intellectual property management system in this country for a reason. It's because when somebody innovates something, they should be able to protect that and commercialize it as well. I know those are two, two separate arguments. Mm -hmm. There's research that happens to make sure that we have access for policy. You know, uh, For example, Environment Canada website has uh, our greenhouse gas emissions inventory that anybody in the country can look at what our emissions targets are. But I think when, you, when it comes to uh, different areas of research there's 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 other arguments that can be made there as well let me bring in the opposition on this so let me just get your reaction to what the information commissioner believing that there is grounds uh, for an investigation so what do you what do you, what do you think of that and I want to go to Kennedy Stewart first 
Right. Well, I think they're right on the money with their criticism. I'm very glad the Information Commissioner is looking into this. Uh, this is a very long-standing problem. In fact, we've uh, brought forward two opposition, really no-brainer <coughs> opposition day motions on this, to which the government has voted no to both of them, really just, just uh, restating the fact that in Canada we believe in scientific freedom and the freedom for scientists to share their evidence with the world, because that's how science works. Uh, I'm a tenured professor, I've been in academics for 20 years now, and uh, the two things that the Conservatives are doing with their clampdown on scientists is, first of all, they're, um, they're restricting uh, the flow of science, but also they're going to, uh, these scientists can vote with their feet, and they can simply move to places where their scientific freedom is, uh, is recognized and supported. So I have deep, deep uh, concerns about what's happening here. In fact, so does the international community. Uh, next week, I'm going to Washington to talk with the American uh, science advisors to the to the President Obama, to uh, <coughs> who who uh, American scientists and uh, government officials have expressed concern to me specifically about what's happening here, because we have a continental uh, approach to uh, scientific uh, exploration here in uh, in North America and. What the Conservatives are doing to Canadian scientists, of course, affect these international teams that have been working years on particular projects. So the chill that we're experiencing here in Canada is now spilling out over our borders and affecting uh, how scientists around the world look at Canada. And I'm very you know, deeply concerned about this, and it's something we have to stop. Now, Kirsty, I want to bring you in. But first, we have an example here of one of the emails submitted in the report to the Information Commissioner's Office with the complaint. Uh, this is an email response from Dr. David uh, Tarasik of Environment Canada, who had been asked by a journalist to comment on a major study on the hole in the ozone layer. Now, the doctor was involved in the study. Take a look at his reply. Uh, he says, I'd be delighted to talk to you, he's referring to talking to the journalist, but rather doubt I'll be allowed to. I am required to refer you to media relations. Uh, he goes on to say, my apologies for the, quote, strange behavior of EC, which is Environment Canada. Now, uh, Ms. Duncan, what's wrong with the department uh, wanting to put media calls through media relations? Well, we actually brought that issue up with Dave, uh, Dr. Tarasuk in the House. Uh, Hannah, I'm a former research scientist myself. In fact, I used to consult to Environment Canada. This report uh, validates what our party has been saying for years, that there is a war on science and scientists in this country. It has been a deliberate campaign by the Harper Conservatives. Um, to muzzle Canadian scientists. The prestigious journal Nature has uh, criticized the Harper Conservatives for uh, ending the office of the National Science Advisor, for skepticism on climate change, and for muzzling scientists. We also see this from the World Federation of Scientist Science Journalists, who wrote to the Prime Minister and said, unmuzzle the scientists, essentially. It matters because we need evidence-based policy but in this country. We need rigorous science for the public good. We need evidence. If you don't base policy on evidence, what do you base it on? And the the answer is ideology, and we owe it to taxpayers whose money we spend. Some of these decisions cost millions of dollars to base it on fact. But we what have is the problem going through um, putting media calls through media relations? Shouldn't the department funding this research know when its scientists are speaking? We also see that's not just the only muzzling we see. As of a very recent decision, scientists who now want to publish their results, they have to have them approved by the government. Um, they want to apply for a grant. They have to seek prior approval. This is ridiculous. As a scientist, we need, we need freedom. We need to be able to share our methodology. We need to be able to share our observations. And our scientists, unfortunately, are being muzzled. And this is attracting international criticism. Just last week and the last two weeks, I've been asked to do interviews in Britain and in the States regarding the muzzling of scientists in Canada. And I'll share an example. Former colleagues of mine, I now hear from scientists in the United States who used to work and for the Canadian government who no longer work there, and they're sharing their stories about how they're being muzzled. Ms. Rempel, what do you think of, we've heard from both Kennedy Stewart and Christy Duncan that they say there's these examples out there. Are these just rogue scientists? 
Well, I think it's interesting that my colleague didn't really respond to your question about is it appropriate to go through media relations. I, I recall reading a book review of one of her books where it actually talked about the science team that she was on. She required all of these scientists to go that through her. That was a democratic decision so based I, I, I think on that an this international scene of are, scientists. That, that, there are, that there are media protocols that are followed. You know, the other thing that came up are about... Are they more stringent now under this government? Well, Absolutely, I, I Hannah, and if I could okay. jump just, in. Just one second. Let's let Ms. Rempel, and then I'll come back to you, yeah, Ms. Duncan. Ms. Rempel. Thank you. Know, you. I think if you look at any not-for-profit, if you look at an academic institution, if you look at companies, they have protocols on, you know, using media relations. That's not to say that there isn't access for information to be published. And I think that the amount of thousands of media interviews that our government scientists have done in the last couple of years shows that that is actually happening. And then, you know, there was a comment that was made about, you know, approval for grant applications. I, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that our scientists are have access to funding, that they have access to get the work done, but that it's within the scope of the department, and then that it's published in a transparent way. And I think that and uh, everything that I've heard that my here. colleagues have brought up today have been sort of hearsay and ideology rather than specific examples. Let's email actually, that, even the email that you have. Ms. Duncan, in. just quickly, and then we'll go to uh, Mr. Ken, uh, Thanks, Kennedy yes, Stewart since, to finish. Since she did talk about my research, that expedition, um, I won the American Biological Safety Award for. I share part of the 2007 Nobel Prize for my work on research on climate change. I won a major award from the government of India. You had to have a Nobel Prize plus make a difference in another scientific discipline. And the way my team worked was by democracy. It had a memorandum of understanding and I operated, our team operated according to the rules that were democratically chosen and not imposed right. upon the okay. I want to go to Kennedy Stewart just quickly. Uh, yeah, this is, this is part of a larger trend. Uh, the first Absolutely. thing, last year we had a 6% cut to the overall science and technology budget. We're bracing for many yeah, more cuts it. coming. Uh, th we have the muzzling of scientists here and we have, and my question for the government is what are they scared of? Most of these scientific papers are little slivers of information that add to the overall picture of science. I don't understand why you wouldn't allow a scientist to, who has collaborated with an international team or a Canadian team to go out and just express what the results are. Uh, this which, adds, which we this say is they can do, Kennedy. I'm going to have to end it there for today. <laughs> I want to. I want to thank Michelle Rempel, uh, <coughs> Christy Duncan, as well as Kennedy Stewart for joining us. Happy Easter. <laughs> thank you, Hannah. Happy Easter. You as well.